Hello, my name is Helena Fohn. I'm the CEO of the EFT and Mindfulness Center, a training organization for EFT and mindfulness. And we also have a sister website called the Holistic Register, and that's for those who practice in other modalities. And we're delighted today as the Holistic Register to invite Stephen Travers here, who's a practitioner and Havening trainer. Stephen has the world, is the world leading expert and trainer in Havening techniques. For the last decade, Stephen has been a training therapist and mental health professionals around the world in how to use Havening to produce fast, lasting, and absolutely extraordinary results for the clients. Stephen is also a therapist with 20 years experience specializing in resolving anxiety, based disorder, trauma, and addictions. Stephen has been interviewed many times in the mainstream media about his transformational work with Havening. Stephen practices and trains worldwide. He can practice over Zoom and trains over Zoom as well as live classes. So we're delighted to get again to invite Stephen here now and ask him a little bit by himself, a little bit about Havening, so we can get to know Stephen and Havening a little bit better. So welcome, Stephen. Thank you for agreeing to this interview. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you for your time. So you are um, you live in Dublin, Ireland. You were born there. Yeah, I live in yeah Dublin, Ireland. I wasn't born here. I was born down the road in a place called Drogheda. But yeah, this is my main residence. Lovely. Okay. And um, I think we mentioned that um, we have some connections, not connections, but some similarities there. And that my family were born in in the area of Dublin, in Dublin, from where you're, you're yeah, from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's lovely to have you. And as I've mentioned before, and um, that doesn't mean you just practice and work in Ireland. You do practice and train worldwide in uh, every corner of the world by the sounds of it. Yeah, is that right? You Hong Kong. Yeah, well, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom is a is yeah. is a game 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 changer. Yeah. yeah so, like, uh, when we run trainings and events, we have people all around the world attending them. Yeah, well, that's great. That's lovely to hear that you can take this into people's homes virtually or into their businesses, can't you? Wherever they are in the world. So basically, um, I don't know an awful, you know, an awful lot about the background to Havening, and it's lovely to have you here today, so we can explore a little bit more about Havening. But what got you into Havening? That's the thing I'm interested in. I'm always on the look at on how I can achieve the most effective, fastest and easiest healing results for my clients, which means I'm always researching and studying the latest breakthroughs in therapy and neuroscience. Uh, you know, I'm one of these people, I, I love personal development and the whole area of therapy and finding out what's happening in regards to breakthroughs and what's new and even novel. And I came across Havening back in 2012 because of that curious mindset, if you like. And I was really one of the very first people in the world to start using it uh, with clients and training it. I was amazed by the results I was getting with it uh, in terms of how fast they were, how effective, and how consistent in terms of working with anxiety-based disorders and trauma. And yeah, since then, going back now almost 12 years, I have done tens of thousands of sessions with clients across the world and trained thousands of, of health professionals. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm a, obviously a major advocate of Havening and what it does uh, for clients and people with anxiety-based disorders. Great. I can sense and see your passion there, Stephen. And I think that's really important, isn't it? And you're quite right in that um, any therapist, any practitioner is used, you know, it's not one tool in the toolbox. And I think it's great that they bring in any other modalities, techniques that will enhance their work. Um, and so that's why I think this will be interesting for our members and anybody viewing this um, web, uh, viewing this interview. So what exactly people will be asking is Havening. Uh, how is it discovered? By whom? What's the potted history of Havening? Havening is a psychosensory therapy based on the latest discoveries in neuroscience for the treatment primarily of anxiety-based disorders, trauma, and building resilience. 
It was developed by my good friend and colleague, Dr. Ronald Rudin, who's a medical doctor. He's a neuroscientific researcher. Uh -huh. And back in 2001, he decided to take a deep dive into the neuroscience and the research in terms to really understand how trauma and anxiety-based disorders become encoded in the brain and the body and how to re-encode them or resolve them which really led to the development and the creation of the havening techniques. And he spent a decade of work uh, uh, doing this. And it was really back in around 2011, 2012, when he then first brought havening out to the world and announced his research. Uh, that, that's when I first came across it. Right. OK. Um... Oh, that's interesting. It's uh, very interesting, the history of that and how it came about and uh, and how it's now spread worldwide. And it's becoming very commonplace now. More and more people are hearing mm. that evening. And, you, you know, it was like when EFT first came out many years ago, very few people heard of it. And there were very few hits on the Internet when you keyed it into Google. But yeah. and I think perhaps havening is similar in that really you have to experience it before you can actually really truly understand it is that correct well it it depends uh, like obviously over the last decade or so like we now have thousands of reviews and testimonials right. like the, the people i've trained in it people like you know psychologists psychotherapists EMDR practitioners people use tapping techniques yeah. hypnotherapists we've got hundreds of uh, reviews and testimonials, which really give you a, an insight into what Havening can do. Uh, and plus we have video demonstrations, et cetera, as, right. as well. But of course, yeah, if you have something that's bothering you, that's very distressing or a trauma or an anxiety-based disorder, and you experience it yourself, yeah. uh, that of course is, can often create a bit of a wow factor, uh, especially if you get a result very, very quickly. Lovely. OK, so um, and if viewers stay with us now later on, you'll be showing us a little bit of how you can use havening on an affirmation, something nicer. But before then, some people under like to understand the science around um, different techniques. Mm. So could you explain a little bit about what the science behind havening for us? Yeah, well, what we've discovered is that anxiety based disorders are a consequence or an expression of unresolved past stressful experiences mm -hmm. and traumatic events, which become neurobiologically encoded in a part of the brain called the lateral amygdala through a specific type of a receptor called an AMPO receptor. And with the havening techniques, we can completely and permanently remove those AMPO receptors off the neurons in the amygdala within minutes to both simultaneously resolve the client's past trauma and the client's presenting anxiety-based disorder. When we apply havening, there's a big increase in delta waves in the, in the brain, which occur in slow wave sleep. The register is about 0.2 to 4 hertz per cycle per second on EEG machines. When we... Uh, like target, say, a traumatic memory or something that's very distressing or triggering the client, these delta waves open up calcium-sensitive voltage channels on the neurons uh, of the amygdala where those amper receptors are and activate an enzyme called calcineurin, which dephosphorylates, which means it removes the phosphate molecule off the amper, off the amper receptor and essentially makes them disappear. That process is called amygdala depotentiation. This takes just minutes. And once this occurs, all the emotional and physiological components of the stress that were part of the trauma and causing the anxiety-based issue disappear. They're completely removed because we've essentially uh, disrupted or cleared that neural pathway that was firing that type of fight, flight, freeze reaction and all the distressing emotions and somatic feelings attached to it. There yeah. is a lot of complexity to the news. <laughs> and I know I'm giving a, you know, I'm, I'm kind of giving yeah. you a bit, a bit of a flash roll of, of, of how that works. So there's a lot of depth and breadth 
to the science. And I know from experience, I think that's the big piece people are missing. Who look yeah. in in the hair everything and to see videos of yeah. you know the sensory touch and eye movement and distraction techniques, yeah. but understanding how trauma becomes encoded in the brain and what's actually happening when we're doing havening is really the, the key part that makes you very effective yeah. uh, havening practitioner. Great. I mean, that was fascinating. Not that I could remember any of really of what you've just told me, but it will satisfy those who are scientifically minded. And I think that's really important to have the science yeah. behind it and to understand that and to revisit it at times. And uh, we had that little chat before when we were talking about the importance of being trained in havening, because it's more than just, as you say, more than just stroking your arms. And we'll um, signpost people as to where they can access that training and the introduction that you're going to be offering, that 90 minute introduction. Um, but as you said before, it's important people are certified. They shouldn't just be picking this up from the Internet learning it from youtube or and then going out and practicing it because as you said there's more behind it there's more to it than well it's from a safety perspective as well for both uh the practitioner and the client especially when you're working with trauma and anxiety based uh issues and if you're working online uh, and that you know that you're uncovered by your insurance so, so there are all these you know very practical and safety uh, things to be aware of of course yeah absolutely so um you, who who is trained in it and who would use it and can it can it be self-applied when you trained in it and what sort of people train in evening what type of people yeah well over the last decade i've trained uh, thousands of health professionals across the world in it uh, mm -hmm. primarily with people like psychologists psychotherapists counselors hypnotherapists EFT practitioners, TFT, holistic therapists, anyone who's really working in the health and wellness field as well, mm -hmm. and especially people who are working with anxiety, stress, and trauma-related issues. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. So a wide range of people can use this technique and incorporate it into their existing practice or mm -hmm. use it as a standalone? Yeah, you can use it both as a standalone uh -huh. uh, modality or like a bolt-on if you like to right. to your existing modalities or therapies lots of therapists have a toolkit uh, yeah. and obviously this this is a, a very powerful and effective one to add in uh, especially as i said if you work with trauma and anxiety issues yeah wonderful so how what modalities would you compare havening with then well, havening is really the latest evolution in psychosensory therapy, such as TFT, uh -huh. EFT, EMDR, in terms of, once again, that neuroscience behind it and the remarkable results it produces. Right. Oh, that's that's good to know as well, isn't it? That's, that's amazing. Now, according to the um, havening website, it appears that havening produces a more rapid response and causes less distress for the client compared to TFT, EFT, EMDR. Um, our members would be really interested to know, um, to learn more about that. But I'd be very interested if you explain that. Yeah, you often do come across sometimes people saying that. I, I know from like the reviews, that, that, that people leave have gone through my trainings, like people who use the MDR, TFT, things like uh, CBT, et cetera. They do make those type of comments sometimes. Part of the reason, once again, is because we now understand how trauma becomes encoded in the brain and the body. Yeah. So we can accurately and quickly pinpoint and identify uh, the traumatic memories or issues that are causing the client's presenting problem and go in and shift it or clear it or depotentiate it. If you want to bring some of the signs back in I like that word. <laughs> re, 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 really quickly, as opposed to maybe, you know, treating symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, which can take much longer and yeah, it can be sometimes more distressing to the clients because you're kind of digging through stuff. And if you don't get to the root, the neurobiological roots of the issue, the results can be very hit and miss. Havening also as well, as I mentioned, the havening touch, we call it, where yeah. we stroke the arms, hands and face, produces this high amplitude of low frequency delta waves in the brain. 
those brain waves that register that 0.5 to 4 hertz per yeah. cycle per second. When that happens in the brain, simultaneously, there's an increase in calming neurotransmitters such as serotonin, oxytocin, and GABA. So when the client is experiencing a havening or applying it, they're going into very profound states of like deep relaxation, it's almost like deep meditation or hypnosis. So it's a very calming mind-body experience client is actually having as well, because essentially we're giving them that real felt sense of bringing them to a safe place. Hence why we call it havening, which comes from the word haven, a safe haven. We're havening you, bringing you to that safe place. There is also another, another big difference with havening is we have a technique called transpirational havening, where we can take multiple traumatic memories and pathological emotions like unresolved anger, rage, shame, guilt, fear, and we can depotentiate uh, all those things often again within minutes. Uh, what is it, a group of them? A group of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can take a big, large wow. body of things that are tagged. This works brilliantly for complex trauma, developmental trauma, where there's a history. Yeah, there, well, there are many traumas that are associated with that underlying. Yeah, maybe lot, you know, adverse childhood experiences yeah. growing up, maybe a dysfunctional family, or mm -hmm. there's maybe years or sometimes even decades of issues. Um, so we, it, it's, we can just go in and wipe all that really quickly. Transpirational healing is very powerful in the sense as well that it will bring up sometimes suppressed or repressed memories or traumas from the client's unconscious into their conscious awareness. And as we're applying havening touch, we're depotentiating it. So we're okay. clearing it and shifting it uh, and, and, and uh, disrupting those neural pathways as, as we're actually doing it in real time. So that, that's... That's one technique you don't actually see online, and that's one of the most powerful of all the havening techniques. Right. I'm always impressed and drawn to any modalities that um, use altered states of consciousness because mm. I think that is where true change happens, and lasting and permanent change can happen when we do access those areas of the, con of the subconscious. And as you say, those altered states that havening takes you into between beta and theta, and yes, which is... Yeah, and delta. Delta, 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 delta is a core in slow wave sleep. Yes. And yeah. when, you're you know, when you're dreaming, you're processing really quickly, uh, your, your brain is essentially going into a sleep type state, even though yes. you're sick, because the sensory touch is producing this high amplitude of delta. And when there's an electrical change in the brain, there's always simultaneously a chemical change. Yeah. And so you use that opportunity just to get in there at that moment in time, as you say, and work with you know with the uh, with the issue at that moment but as the memories are coming up and the client okay. is feeling oh, the emotions, yeah. we get them to chant to that. Yeah. yelling and clearing it. Right simultaneously in the process perfect that was a lovely explanation and obviously there is more to it than that and you're giving a mm. bite size um explanation of this yeah. so thank you for that so that leads me to ask you um i'm sure many other people would be curious is like what is the most amazing experience you've had with havening whether it's uh, yourself or with a client I mean, there are probably many. <laughs> yeah, probably there, many. There are there are many. I I I have a saying. I've been quoted on it once or twice, where I've said, "With havening, you get used to miracles," and uh, I, like it, and I mean that. And it takes a lot for me to say something like that. But one that does stand out to me is nine years ago. This is when I was really, you know, starting to do my trainings, etc. And I was asked to speak at a Reiki practitioner meetup group in Dublin, City Centre. Right. And a few days before, a lady called me and she wanted to do some therapy and she was severely traumatized. She was having flashbacks, panic attacks. She wasn't sleeping. She was having nightmares. She's feeling a lot of anger and rage. And uh, she was literally, you know, we talk about abreacting almost, well, abreacting on the phone, really distressed. The reason why? 
she had found her son dead who had just committed suicide. So really serious issue. At the time I was booked up three months in advance and she couldn't exactly afford the sessions either. And I said to her, look, because she lived in the city centre, I said, look, I'm doing a talk in a few days in, uh, for a therapy group. I will be doing a demo. Come along and let me see what I can do at the event. I may even do the demo with you because we had a very you know, specific traumatic memory right there of her finding her son. But like, it, you know, it, it was huge. And especially in terms of how it was affecting her. So I went into the hotel in the city center, uh, walking through the room. You know, there's about 40 people there. And this is like the early days, you know, almost 10 years ago. And I started thinking, you know, am I wise to actually do this? Because this is like a big, massive thing if I bring this lady up. And of course, she showed up. The lady came up to the very front uh, expecting for me to do the demo with her, which is fair enough. Anyway, I brought her up for the demo part, got her to close her eyes. She had an ab reaction uh, of sorts. You could say it, say it as in there was a big emotional outburst when she yeah. connected to the memory, it's just the emotional pain uh, and the shock of, of finding her son. Anyway, did the happening, and within five minutes, she went from a 10 down to a zero on the SUD score. Uh, it took 10 years off her. Uh, she was smiling, looked you know, really calm, relaxed. When we did the debrief on the memory, and this is a big thing with Havening as well, we do very clinical, in-depth debriefs when we do a piece of work where we go back into the memories, the, be it the, the traumatic event or all the memories in regards to the complex or developmental trauma, and we check all the components, the cognitive component, the emotional, the right. somatosensory, and the autonomic to make sure everything is cleared. All she could see in the debrief was an image of her son uh, with a golden light behind him, uh, as if he was in heaven looking peaceful oh. and happy. So it was like this type of metaphorical uh, healing or post-havening outcome, which can occur sometimes. Oh. Yeah, so, and I always remember that evening as well. So yeah, it was a bit of a wow factor because the people watching it, like their, their mats kind of dropped. I always remember the next day we had a flood of signups for our training uh, because, just because of, of you know, people uh, seeing and, and witnessed that demo. So that was one of the very early ones. And that's, you know, there's some of the reasons why it stands, stands out to me. Because it really showcased to me how effective it is, even in a situation like that in a hotel room with 40 strangers, essentially, uh, and in the space of, you know, five minutes or so. So it was kind of one of those... Yeah, seemingly ma miraculous results. Right, quite. I expect you use it yourself, or you have used it yourself on your own issues. Well, one of the nice things when you're doing havening with clients is you're you're using it on yourself if you're, if you're working every day because you're guiding them, you're showing right. them. So yeah. but, you know, also, you're getting the benefits as we call as a secondary it. benefit. You're <laughs> you're getting your delta waves, you're building up your resiliency, yes. you're changing the electro chemical yeah. landscape of yeah. your brain so that is one of the secondary benefits but yeah i've used it on my family sometimes uh people who have known in distress so it can be a very practical tool to help mm -hmm. regulate stress or even if someone's had a very uh, you know traumatic experience you can go right in even help to prevent the traumatization from occurring by catching it early wonderful absolutely wonderful um so um I watched your video the, that I'm going to put a link to so everybody can watch this demo. If you're working with a lady who had a fear of flying and um, in that video, uh, you mentioned that was it a year later or something, you went back and the fear hadn't come back. So the results are permanent and long lasting then with the evening. Yeah, and once again, from a neurobiological perspective, once amygdala depotentiation occurs and we remove those AMP receptors off the surface of the neurons, yeah. that pathway, that neural pathway is completely and permanently cleared because you can't go back to oh, the I'm past and, you know, to that memory and reinstate yeah. There's a neurobiological change in the brain and it's permanent. So we can even say to clients, I think you even see that in that demo, which people will be able to watch later, 
or I even say to the client, do your best to bring back the trauma. So I say, close your eyes, we do the debrief. Then I'll, I say again, do your best to bring it back. Like really try your best or do your best to bring it back. And people find they can't right. because there's a neurobiological change. That neural pathway is not firing that electrochemical signal anymore to different areas of the brain or nervous system. We've delinked it. It's gone. Right. So it's not firing or wiring it anymore. So that it's just totally disconnected and it kind of accesses. Yeah. Exa exactly. It's not it's not firing any anymore. It's disconnected. That's exactly that's exactly what it, yeah. what you just Lovely. said. Yeah. yeah. Um and because this is, you know, obviously we've talked about anxiety. So the range of issues that can work on seem to be very wide ranging. There's uh, there's very few things I believe that Haven can't work on. Um, anxiety, obviously, I've, you've mentioned that it does work on. That's a subject that's of, um, of interest to many people today. But also because of anxiety, people are moving towards coping strategies such and becoming addicted. So how does it work for addictions, for example? Yes. Well, once again, addictions are often a consequence of the person's inability to deal with unresolved stress, anxiety, trauma. So people yeah. end up self-medicating. Yeah. In some sort of pain, be it emotional or maybe even physical, and they're using alcohol, uh, you know, emotionally eating, opioids. drugs, <laughs> opi o opioids, yeah, codeine is I've worked I've worked a lot with people, you know, with emotional eating, alcohol, drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's always nearly some sort of pain or trauma or story there about why the person ends up doing what they're doing. Uh -huh. So once again, by targeting uh, the stressors, the trauma, the pain, then regulating and clearing it, the need to then self-medicate naturally dissipates and can even disappear. I've worked with many people where I haven't even treated the alcohol issue head on. I've worked with clearing the trauma and the anxiety. And as a natural a consequence, to just stop drinking or they rebalance it again and it changes their relationship with it. Obviously, we can do very specific work on addictions themselves and breaking the, the habit and the behavior, uh, but dealing with those underlying stressors is often the key to, to really resolving it quickly and long term uh, for the individual. Yeah, and, and that's, that's exactly it. And I'm pleased to hear that because um, it's working with those underlying dri drivers, isn't it? You see the the alcohol abuse, the drug addiction, they're just symptomatic. They're symptoms and the underlying cause is, is the driver, isn't it? What's beneath all that that drives that behaviour? And often it's a trauma that's behind it, an unresolved trauma. Yeah, and it can be a huge amount of stuff. There could be years of you know, yeah. complex trauma, childhood abuse, Absolutely. and the person just starts hitting the bottle or, or, or doing something mm -hmm. to self-medicate. Even addiction is in itself can traumatize people because when people get really addicted, they go into a dopamine deficit state. Mm -hmm. It creates a more vulnerable electrochemical landscape. Uh, and then coming off the addiction, there are, there's also a dopamine reset where the brain has to regain homeostasis and build up that dopamine uh, again. So when we do the havening training, like in my training, I have a specific section or bonus section where we teach people how to specifically uh, work with clients with uh, unwanted habits, behaviors, and addictions. Yeah. And there, there are some distinctions and some differences in how to do that, especially yeah. from the, the dopamine fasting perspective and how to make that process easier. Obviously, we bring havening in there as well because that's changing the, 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 the chemistry and making it easier uh, for the client during that you know, first 30 days or so of being completely uh, abstinent or abstaining from their drug of choice. Great. Well, that's lovely. I mean, you've, you know, you've been wonderful today in answering all these questions, and I hope that it's given people um, a taste of havening because what I'd like you to do now if you can is just give us a little demo on um, how to use affirmation havening and also to mention to anybody watching this right now is that you're just to remind everybody that you're hosting a free 90 minute introduction to havening on the 11th of April and that can be accessed via a link which is going to be attached to this video.
on the website. And then you also have a training course coming up and you've already mentioned this is suitable for anybody, psychologists, mental health practitioners or um, complementary therapists. Yeah. Or anybody interested in self-healing even, I presume? Yeah, the the introduction events really, yeah, it's 90 minutes where we take a deep yeah. dive again. That's we show some training. we show yeah. we show some demos of, of healing being done, yeah. working on trauma. Uh the intro event and the training is it's really for yeah, health professionals and therapists who want to learn how to achieve yeah. the best healing results for their clients, and also for practitioners who want to learn how to create a thriving and successful practice. Uh, before I got into this whole therapy world, you know, it's going back 20 years ago, uh, I used to work in sales and marketing. I love the whole psychology behind it. It's wow. kind of the, the thing that I do alongside with the therapy, uh, because for me, they actually complement each other. So yeah. when I do training with people, I want them obviously to get fantastic results with their clients, but create a thriving practice in the process. Uh, so they can help more people and just make a, a great living from what they're doing. Uh, because I see so many therapists who are actually really good at what to do, but sometimes they're not too good at the, the marketing, yeah. uh, the sales, how to communicate yeah. to the general, general public. Yeah, they true. sometimes have some skewed ideas <laughs> about it. They're on all these talents and they're not getting it. Yeah, so for, yeah. Yeah, so for me, you know, that that's also kind of like a, a, bo a bonus that I bring to it. Because uh, I believe, you know, let, let's let's create brilliant results for our clients, but let's, you know, get you out there and communicate that to right. the general to the general public. Wonderful. Um, you you yeah. couldn't get a better combination, really, could you? Yeah, well, that's I'm I'm a, I'm well, that blowing my trumpet too loud. I'm a little bit unique that way because most therapists tend not to be that big in the sales and marketing. I'm one yeah. of these. I, I love both for because for me it's all psychology. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really great. So you've got the training coming up on the twelfth of May. That's the eleventh and the twelfth of May. 11th that's and the twelfth of May. That's that's the international certified <laughs> evening practitioner. That's two days live online where we go deep into the yeah. neuroscience so you really understand it. Live demos every day where we're working on things like PTSD, panic attacks, somatization disorders, uh, anxiety, obviously, building resilience. We even look at chronic pain. And we do a lot of breakout sessions, one-hour one breakout groups where you're really practicing each technique to just see me demo, so you're duplicating it. Right. And I also have a team of uh, certified international healing facilitators. So you go into a group of three with one of those uh, team members as well. So mm -hmm. it's an intensive training that's really designed to give you the skills to start using havening confidently and confidently after those two days. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. So after that two days of training, they could... They are practitioners yeah. and they can go out and help. So they, they are, they've they done the official training. They can yeah. start using it with their clients, yeah. friends, family. There is a certification process right. uh, where we do look for X, well, 30 case studies, two videos, and there's a neuroscience online review. Yeah. But yeah. I act as your mentor. You get me as your mentor through that. So I take you by the hand. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, if you have any questions, you just ask me and I give you some feedback and advice as you go as well. Lovely. Oh, well, that on the intro event, we go into a bit more detail about, about the value of that as well. Fantastic. So you're going to take us through this little affirmation mm. for, um, and as I say, the viewers will be able to access those links, see the demo, sign up for that introductory course. And even before watching that, if they want to sign up for the two-day training course, there's a link to that as well. And the website is... Your website is yeah, it's the it's the Havening uh, dot s Stephen Travers. I think you're going to share share. The I will be sharing that. that yeah. Yes, but just for those who are interested, it's Stephen dot Travers Havening org. Yeah, it's it's Haven. So we changed the story. We changed it there a while ago. It's Havening dot Stephen Travers. But uh, yeah, if you just put it in the link notes, the link's going to be there. And people will be there, able yeah. to access it. Yeah, absolutely. And they can always contact you anyway if they need to know more information. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Stephen. So, yeah, we'd be interested. It'd be really... Affirmational havening. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Affirmational havening, by the way, is one of the most simplest of havening techniques in many ways. 
but yeah. it's very good for uh, creating states of calmness, well-being, building emotional resilience. And the way we do affirmational havening is we will ask clients to think of a memory or an emotional state that they'd like to access. So if you like to feel really calm or relaxed, we'll ask you maybe to think of a time when you felt really calm, maybe uh, you know your favorite beach or walking through a park or a memory where you felt joyful or really confident or right. powerful or positive. So it's really about accessing that state and applying havening touch simultaneously. Okay. So what I'd like everyone to do is take a moment and just think of something or a time or memory when you felt really calm, happy, relaxed, joyful, confident, whatever state you'd like to create or access within yourself. Okay. And when you have that memory in mind, I'd like you to take both hands and then put them on your shoulders. And begin very gently stroking down your arms. Now the key with the arm havening is to stroke from the top of the shoulders all the way down. Only do it downwards. Whilst we think of this nice place. Yeah, we're going to go to that now. Then I'd like everyone to close their eyes. Keep applying the havening touch. And then just remember that calming, positive place. Picture it in your mind, make the images big and bright, as if you're seeing it through your own eyes again. Remember any sounds. And just the feelings and the atmosphere and energy of that peaceful, calming, tranquil place. Or time when you felt really good. And as you keep stroking, just think of the word or the emotion associated to that place in your mind. Think of the word like, I am calm or I am relaxed. Just keep chanting the emotion or the feeling you feel like, I am calm, calm, calm. Once again, just imagine, picture the memory, make the colors big and bright. Remember the sounds and the feelings of being there. And just notice, noticing your mind and body kind of relax. You can take in a slow, gentle breath as you go, as you keep applying the havening touch. Then we're gently going to move to our palms. So you can gently open your eyes, look at me, and just copy what I'm doing. This is called palm havening. We're just gently massaging the palms. Then I'd like you again to close your eyes. And if you wish, you can think of another calming memory, the same one or even a different one, another time when you felt happy, relaxed, peaceful, or at ease. Once again, just picture what you saw, remember the sounds and the feelings. As you gently massage the palms of your hands with light circular motions, it's just like you're gently washing the palms. And again, just notice how you feel. Just notice I am, what's the emotion? It could be I am calm. I am safe, I am peaceful, I am happy, I am relaxed, I am at ease.
That's right. Just keeping keeping focus and that soft sense of touch. That's uh, so just gently massaging the palms, taking in a slow, gentle breath. That's right. Then we're going to gently move to our face. And you can gently open up your eyes and look at me and copy me. I'm going to gently massage around our forehead and our cheeks. Inter interestingly, the face produces the highest amplitude of delta waves in the brain. So it's a really good place to apply the havening touch to. Just think of gently massaging the face or washing the face, with your fingertips and palms, soft and gentle stroking around the forehead and the cheeks. And again, you can just close your eyes and remember and recall that happy, peaceful or calming place. Taking in a slow, gentle breath as you do. And again, thinking of the word maybe calm, relaxed, tranquil, peaceful, safe, calm. And then finally, I'd like you just to go back down to the arms and the top of the shoulders, keeping your eyes closed, stroking all the way down through the elbows. And imagine bringing these calming, comfortable feelings with you into the rest of today. Imagine approaching the rest of your day in this more peaceful, calm state. Seeing what you'd see, hearing what you'll hear, and feeling how that feels. And imagining having a good day. Even imagine bringing these calming, comfortable, positive feelings with you into the coming days and the rest of your week. Even if any challenges appear, you feel more calm, relaxed, and at ease more resourceful, more resilient, more capable, more confidence, and more at ease. And if you wish, you can practice this havening touch over the coming days by simply massaging your arms, hands, and face with your eyes closed and remembering positive, happy memories, or even imagining something positive in the future that you'd love to achieve, or something that you're really looking forward to. And every time you do this, you feel more calm and at ease. And when you're ready, you can gently open up your eyes 
maybe take a little stretch if you wish and just notice how you're feeling. <clears throat> I feel great. I don't want to come out of it. <laughs> Yes, there is a tent. Even there's a temptation for me just to keep going, uh, yeah. but yeah, it, it's a, it's a bit of a taster of of really of havening touch and yeah, the affirmational havening. We generally, by the way, Helena, always end the session uh, on a type of affirmational havening and teach our clients how to use that affirmational havening between the sessions as well. Great. Well, I hope whoever's watching this has um has been enthused enough to sign up for your course i think it's absolutely amazing if i could fit that in this year i would but i would definitely have it on my list of definite to do's um and i think it's an amazing uh, technique that, that can be used alongside or integrated in any of your existing clinical yeah. practices or practices um, per se so uh, thank you so much i'm really um, sorry that this has had to come to an end i'm sure we could carry on talking about so many um things especially about havening and um Thank you very much, Stephen, for that. And I uh, will signpost people to, for, to the introductory course for the 90 minute introductory course, as I say, and the link to sign up for the training course as well on the 11th and 12th of May. Let's get more Havening practitioners out there. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, Lena. Wishing Thank you, you all the me. very best. Lovely to talk to you. You take care. Thank Bye you. Now.